Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and this is another video about how I store my shirts from the thrift store. And it's different now, and I have a lot to say about it. So stay with me. I have already made a video called how I store my men's dress shirts from the thrift store. And if you wanna see that, we'll have the link. Here's a picture of it. And it's a good system. It was a good system. <laughs> and like all systems, when things change, the system has to change. And so today I want to talk to you about um, a different way that I'm now storing my shirts. And it's because what I was doing stopped working. It's like the stick bug in A Bug's Life. Me think it, it's, it's not, not working. working. And it was not working. And um, so I was getting ready to work on some of my works in progress. And I'm at a challenging place in at least two of them. And as you know, creativity is messy and disordered sometimes. And so my sewing area had gotten really cluttered and that's just the nature of the beast. And most of the time I work in that pretty well. And then when I finish a project, I kind of put everything away. But the morning that I hit the wall about my system for storing my shirts, I needed to get to work on these two challenging projects and I could not free up the mental space to be able to figure it out. And so creativity is problem solving in addition to being messy and disordered at times. So I just was a jumble of thoughts, just like my shirts that I have from the thrift store. To that end, in my this is not actually a very big sewing space. I've had a couple of people say, I'd love to see your sewing area. This is it. This is not a this is not a stage or a studio. This is where I work. And so I don't know if you can tell, this is how big this space is. It's about a foot and a half more that way uh, off camera. And so it's really kind of small. And I had been collecting linen for my linen quilt that I'm working on. And so I did not put those linen items away. I just had kind of piled them up in the corner, literally because I didn't want to go through the trouble of folding them and putting them all away, knowing that I'm going to take them apart and use them. And so this workspace had gotten very, very junky and my shirts were piling up and I was starting to feel like I couldn't have clear thoughts <laughs> in this space. So um, I hit the wall with it. It's the I'm going to lose it, it if, we don't, if we don't make it. We have to come up with something else like piles of shirts in the corner. No shirts on top of shirts on top of totes. No. And so I really just could not move forward with any of my projects until I reevaluated my system. So I'm going to get my new way out here where I can talk about it um, and just give you that as information so that if you're struggling with your system or if you don't have a system, it might be, I don't know, hopefully helpful and you go, oh, that might work for me if what you have isn't working for you either. So if you saw that previous video and now you're looking at me with this tote in front of me, you're probably thinking this does not look all that different <laughs> and you'd be right except there's some details. And of course, you know, I have I have so many thoughts and I like to share them with you. My original system, I had two of these totes and I had colored shirts in one. And in the other tote, I had neutrals and pale blues, because honestly, in the men's shirt world, pale blue shirts are the neutrals. So I had those two totes. And it worked really well. I have folded them in such a way that it's that kind of Marie Kondo method where the fold is up. I would really highly recommend this. You can see the fabric 
they are still in shirt form. If they're stacked the other way, things get on the bottom and get forgotten. And I want to talk about that, but not right this second. So you can see at a glance what you have in a tote. I could see at a glance what I have in my tote. And I had two of them. And what really forced me to make a change, in addition to the clutter of the piled up shirts in the corner, I also am quickly running out of room in my fabric stash. So not my shirt stash, but my fabric stash. And as I've started getting a little more yardage to do um, backings and backgrounds, I was running out of space. Of course, I thought to myself, well, I have this other tote, but then of course it's filled with shirts. So I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with myself or just kind of a, you know, like, let's realign what I need and what is working and what is not working. So what was not working was the, I have all this linen, I don't wanna put it all away. Also, I have a whole bunch of shirts that I've gotten from thrift hauls, which by the way, those of you that comment, oh, you have such discipline, such self-discipline when you shop. This is why I've had to have self-discipline because otherwise I would be totally overrun with shirts. And I counted, by the way, I have 63 shirts <laughs> that need to be broken down. And I think it's seven pairs of linen pants. So I have a lot of fabric that's not yet fabric. It's still clothes. Honestly, it just wasn't working. So I emptied the totes. I confiscated one of the totes for use for the fabric stash. And I put all of my um, yardage that I have. So a lot of background fabric, a lot of backing fabric in that and moved it in the other room where my the rest of my fabric is. I got my cuffs and collars, I put them in a bag, that freed up another little tote. And what I was left with was just this tote for the shirts, which is not enough tote for the shirts. <laughs> Lots of shirts, not enough tote. In the meantime, we've had our younger daughter go off to college. And if you've had this situation, you're already probably thinking, there's a free closet. And there is, there's a free closet. Formerly, I would have not considered using closet space for my shirt stash just because it wasn't available. And now it is. And it gets it out of my sewing area, which for me is really, really important right now because I have so many projects. So I'm having to evaluate the needs that I have with the space that I have and also the shirts that I have. And let me just tell you, I was getting to the place I was starting to offer money to family members to break down shirts. So it's starting to feel kind of desperate. So what I did is I pulled out all the shirts again and went through them again. <laughs> and I just hung them up on uh, the ones, a whole slew of them and started hanging them up just to get them off the floor and away. And in the meantime, I realized I have gotten quite a collection of linen shirts, and here they are. Several of you have asked in comments over the past, however, do I separate my linen from my cotton shirts, from my, my linen fabric, from my cotton fabric? And the answer is once the shirts are broken down, no. I put them all in my fabric stash and I use them willy-nilly. But now this new system, I actually have collected all of the linen shirts and put them together. And I think the reason why that made sense to me was because I'm going to do another linen quilt and now I have it all together. And breaking down a linen shirt is a little bit trickier than a regular cotton shirt if you're trying to be careful because it ravels and snags and can tear holes in it easily and so on and so forth. So I put all my linen shirts together so I can see what I have, which will help me in the future make decisions about that quilt that is yet to be. I folded up all of the tan linen that I'm still going to need. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. And then everything left, I hung on hangers. I wanna show you that and talk about 
shirts that you have and evaluating whether they still work for you and also the rest of the story of my system. So that's next. In case you haven't seen the video where I talk about how I store my fabric once it stops being this and starts being just plain fabric, here's an example. This is one of the little shallow totes um, that I use and I had greens and yellows in this tote and it was packed full. So when I confiscated the other one of these totes it, and did some other maneuvering, it freed up a tote. So now I have basically all greens and turquoises in this tote and this is what it looks like. So some of these are shirts, some of these are fat quarters, some of these are hand-me-down fabric from family members, and I just group them by color. So I have a yellow and orange, I have a red and pink, now I have a green and turquoise, blues, purple and, and so on and so forth. I'm beating a dead horse. If you needed a visual, this is what my fabric stash looks like. It's just several of these totes in a closet in another room. All right, so next up. So the beauty of going through your shirts and coming up with any kind of system is you remember what you have in case you've forgotten. In this case, I wanted to show you a couple and also um, just highlight. So I, I put these on hangers that are not especially nice or fancy or anything. And as I hung them in my daughter's closet, I had the, oh, look at that. And then, oh, I remember reading that. That's such a great low volume. And then, oh, this purple one with the cool print. <laughs> so this is what happens. And in the original video, I talked about um, things sparking joy and those of us that love fabric and quilts, that energy and joy that we get from fabrics is is part of the whole point. It's a lot of fun and it makes quilting fun because we love the fabric. And so as you're considering how to store your shirts and you're going through your shirts, you may realize whatever system you choose, there were shirts that you really loved that you had forgotten about that had kind of gotten buried in the bottom. This shirt that's on the very back, I bought and I'm probably still gonna send it to my friend Laurie in upstate New York, but I had a, a plaid shirt that I had hung up and as I was trying to work on the process that's behind me I was looking for some navies and I thought well let me just go look through those shirts that are hanging up and there was a plaid shirt that just had a panel of blue on it and as I was kind of thumbing through and just like I do in the thrift store click 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 shoot, um, click 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 shoot, I saw that yellow and turquoise shirt but i noticed that that navy panel and had i not had them in that way i'm not sure that i would have noticed that navy part of the plaid so that would be a benefit now some people i did talk about this before some people don't do well with their with hanging their shirts because they continue to think of them as shirts and it's maybe a barrier to breaking them down to thinking of them as fabric. I don't particularly have that issue. So for me, it's just out of the way and orderly, which was really what I needed for the system. Um, so this is, I just wanted to show you, this is the sort of thing that you can go, oh, look at that, there's this, and oh, look at that. And so that's now what I have hanging in my daughter's closet. I have a bunch of shirts that I can see, and I can still easily take my fabrics for a project that I'm working on and hold them up against the shirts that are in the closet and go, okay, this will work, this will not work, without having to commit to taking all of the shirts apart before I use them in a quilt. So now that I've shown you this, I'm gonna put these neatly over here, and we're gonna talk about the next thing. So this is the stack of tan linen pants that I'm gonna be using for that orange peel quilt. I had to really think this through, what do I, do with this? Do I put these away in a storage tote of some sort? Do I 
put them on. I, I don't do I hang them because the reality is the reason why I had them piled up in the corner is I still need them. But I am doing that quilt in pieces and parts. So I'm still using them and I will break these down as I need them for that linen orange peel quilt. I really didn't want to put them all away. So what I did is I organized them by color. It's a theme, organizing by color. You can kind of see this is the grayest and it just goes down to, I have one pair of pants at the bottom that are, I'm probably not gonna be able to use. They're a little too purpley pinky, um, but I have all of my linen pants. There is a shirt in here that I'll use for that quilt. When I cleared out this space for the two totes down to one tote, what that left me with was some space in that space where I store them. So I had a moment, is this gonna be an issue? No, cause I'm using them and I need to be able to access them and I need to not feel like I have to pull out a whole bunch of stuff. I could just reach off the top. So I have these folded and they are sitting on top of the tote of linen and I will be able to use them as I need them. And then when I get done with that quilt and I've used all I need, I can either complete breaking them down or I can relegate them to some other system. So it's one of those, it's working for now. I may have to reevaluate uh, before that quilt is done, but I feel much freer to do that. I think when I did that original system, I thought this is it. And it was it for right then. And then my needs changed. And so my system has had to change. So this is going to go on top of the tote that of linen and I'll use it until that quilt is done and then there's one other thing I want to show you and talk about and then that'll be it for storing our shirt fabrics so being committed to talk about all the things all the time I have to bring up the topic of what do you do when you buy a shirt and then you have it and then either no longer like it or don't have a use for it and when you clean out your shirts and come up with a storage system, inevitably, you're going to find some shirts that you go, why did I buy this? I'm not going to use this. And I really had a lot of that more than I thought, like, why did I buy this? And I buy a lot of shirts for specific projects. So these top three I bought when I was making a baby quilt, baby girl quilt, and I was trying to bridge from a kind of orangey to a pink and they're beautiful. And I actually really like them, but I bought them specifically for that project and then they didn't work. So there's a couple of things you can do, obviously. You can make a case for, I don't wanna use it now, but I might in the future. This top one is one of those that I think I might use it in the future. The second one, I really don't see myself using this. So I can gift this um, in a giveaway on Patreon, or I can take it back to the thrift store, which I have done. I have re-donated shirts that I have bought. I might check and see if any of my friends that quilt are interested in it. I have a local friend who's a pharmacist too, and apparently we're attracted to the same shirts. We have two or three of the exact same shirt. So this might be one that she would use. Uh, I recently asked a fellow friend and local quilter, hey, do you have any blue scrap fabric. I'm looking to fill in some gaps with this thing. If you're in a community of quilters, you might break it down and just see if anybody wants it. Um, this pink one I think is beautiful, but I really just don't see myself using it. This one I bought for the Quilty Stars block and I didn't like it then, but I thought it was going to work and now I don't think it's going to work. I'll probably donate this one back um, to the Goodwill. And a lot of these were not terribly expensive. Same here and same here. This is a great shirt, but I just I just don't see how I'm going to use it. Um, so there is a place where I think we have to evaluate these shirts that I have, are these ones that I'm going to use now or later, or did I buy it for a specific project? And it just doesn't work and it's probably not going to. And I personally 
don't think there's any harm in having purchased something and realize this is not working and giving it back to the Goodwill. There have been plenty of times that I have bought clothes for actually this, the dress that I'm wearing came from the Goodwill. I mean, however much the original person paid for this dress, we have gotten all of the good out of it and then some, and I'm still wearing it. So, you know, I just got $3 worth of wear out of sitting right here. So if I turn a $3 shirt back into the Goodwill, we'll charge it to the game. I just don't think it's really a huge loss. But definitely there are all kinds of ways um, to decide what to do with your fabrics that you don't like. And as Karen Brown would say, if you don't like it, just keep cutting it smaller <laughs> and use it anyway. So I, I just didn't want this how to store your or how I store my fabrics now video to not acknowledge. Sometimes you just have shirts that yuck, why do I even have this? And I think part of keeping that system and management working for you, working for me, is to cull the things that we don't want or don't like anymore, don't spark joy anymore. Because what the system should do is free you up for more creativity. It should support your creativity, not hinder your creativity, not hinder my creativity, and not make me think, ugh, I don't even like that. And now I'm having to break down a shirt that I don't even like. No, I don't. I can give it right back to the Goodwill where I got it. Or I can give it to a friend who would love it and who's making a light blue quilt. So just didn't want that moment to pass. That's it for today. Um, and that's my storage system for now. It will likely change again when my life invariably changes again. Um, but I think it's just such a good exercise for us all to go, what's working here? What's not working? And what kind of systems help us have the creativity and joy and just the the desire to get in and quilt and sew and craft and have all of our environment in such a way that it actually fosters that instead of holding us back. I hope this has been helpful for you today. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching.